Hello, my name is Brandon and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics. If you are new to the channel, welcome, it is great to have you. If you're a returning viewer, it is great to have you back. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with classmates, colleagues, or friends, or anyone else you think might benefit from watching. Now you can also find a link in the description below to all of my playlists, basically a table of contents. And of course, please hit subscribe and click the bell notification if you haven't already. So now that we are introduced, let's go ahead and get started. So this video is the next in our series on analysis of covariance or ANCOVA. And it's a very simple question, what's going on? So what is actually going on when we conduct ANCOVA? This video will take place entirely within Excel. So if you look in the description below, you will find a link to the file I'm using and you can follow along if you like. So let's go ahead, jump into Excel and learn more about what's going on in ANCOVA. Okay, so here we are in Excel. Let's go ahead and figure out exactly how ANCOVA works. So here is our data. In column A, we have our dependent variable and these are study skill scores for college students. In column B, we have our single factor. So in this case, it is year in school. We have eight students in year one, eight students in year two, and eight students down in year three. In column C, we have our quantitative covariate, and that is GPA. So dependent variable, single factor, and covariate. Now the fundamental question we are asking ourselves here is this. In our dependent variable, we obviously have variation. So what we want to know is first, when we account for the variation in those scores based on the GPA first, what is left? So the first thing we're gonna do is find out what proportion or what amount of the variation in the dependent variable of scores is accounted for by GPA. Then based off what is left, we will conduct our single factor or one way ANOVA on year. So first, let's go ahead and recode this and run the entire model, and then we'll work backwards. So here we recoded our year. So year one is given a one, year two is given a one, and then year three is zero, zero. This is basic dummy coding. So what we'll do is go ahead and run a regression model. This is how you can run ANCOVA using regression over everything. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go to data, data analysis, regression, and then for my dependent variable or my Y's will be column A there. My X's will be B, C, and D. I have labels and I'll select residuals. We'll need those eventually. Click OK. All right, so this is about the entire model here. So we can see that we have a multiple R of 0.77, an R square of 0.599, and then we have in our ANOVA table, we can see that the P value here is definitely less than 0 0.001, so it is significant overall. We have a total sum of squares of 3,078.5. Now of that total sum of squares, 1842 is taken up by the regression or the regression model. And then the residual or what's left over is 1,235. So of course, because so much of the total sum of squares is taken up by the model, the regression, that is why the model is significant. Then we have our intercepts and so forth down here and our residuals. So this is what the whole model looks like. Now I wanna skip over to another set of output. This is done using a piece of software in Excel called Excel Stat, which I recommend and I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that. It's just a good Excel add-in that does some very advanced techniques. So we can see that this matches. So the first thing I wanna point out is the correlation matrix here. We can see that our GPA covariate has a very high correlation with our dependent variable of scores. So it's 0 0.721. That'll be important here in a minute or two. Then the overall output here matches what we have from regression. So we can see just for example, the R square here is 0.599. Uh, if you remember here, it's 0.599 as well. So everything matches up. And then down here, we can see that our F is 9.942. Our P value is the same. Total sum of squares is the same. And 
the way our sum of squares is allocated is the same. So everything here matches. This is just using a different piece of software to get the same basic output. And of course it gives a lot of other information. All right, so that's sort of the big picture. What we're gonna to try to do is figure out how this works piece by piece. So here is another set of our data, and we're gonna do this piece by piece, because I want you to see what's going on under the hood in ENCOVA. So remember, I said the first thing we need to do is figure out what proportion or what amount of variance in our dependent variable of scores is accounted for or taken up by the GPA alone. So the way we can do that is just using regular regression. So we're gonna perform regression, using scores as our dependent and GPA, the covariate, as the independent. We're gonna ignore our year for right now. So we'll go to data, data analysis, regression. We'll double check to make sure everything is selected correctly. There we go. And then our X range, in this case is just GPA. We'll put our output in F1 again and residuals as well, we'll need those. Okay, so here is our summary output. The first thing I wanna point out to you is look at our multiple R right here. Well, we have seen this number before. So 0.721 is the same as the correlation between GPA and scores that we have in our correlation matrix over here. Let's go back. So what I can do is actually use Excel's correlation function here and we can use the scores for one of the arrays and GPA for the other array. And you'll see that we get the same thing. So this all checks out. It matches our other output and the multiple R is of course the same as the correlation when we're using simple regression. R squared is obviously just that squared. So 0.7212 squared is 0.52016. Now if we go down to the actual ANOVA here, we can see a few things that are interesting. First, we can see that the p-value is very small. It's very, very small. We can see that the f-value is high. If we look at the total sum of squares, it's 3,078.5 again. That's the same as we had before. We can also see here that of that 3,078.5, 1601 of that is taken up by the regression or the model we're doing. So that's why this is significant. So we should pause here and ask ourselves, why is this really important? Well, what we have done here is shown that just GPA alone, all by itself, ignoring year completely, that accounts for over half of the total sum of squares in the entire model. So pretending year doesn't even exist, we have already accounted for 1,601 of the total of 3,078.5. So what intuitively do you think that's gonna tell you about the effect of year? Because we've already taken up so much of the total sum of squares using GPA. So I would say that our hypothesis here is that once we've accounted for GPA, year isn't gonna make that much difference. All right, so how can we go ahead and do that in the next step? Well, remember I said earlier that the first thing we're gonna do is find this, which is how much variance in the scores is accounted for by GPA, then we will perform a single factor or one-way ANOVA on what's left. Now, in statistics, we have a name for, quote, what's left, and that is called residuals. So here's what we can do, and this is how this works. What we can do is go down to our residual output here, and we see that for all of our observations, we have a predicted and a residual. So what we can do is, just for the sake of making sure it's easy to see, I'm gonna color code these a little bit, so bear with me. It's always good to use color or some other technique in your sheets so you know what corresponds to what. All right, so the first eight students, second eight students, and the third eight students. Here are the predicted scores and the residuals. So what we can do is go back up, we'll make some more room, scroll over a little bit, and here I'm gonna say year one R, year two R, year three R. So that's year one residual, year two residual, year three residual. So I'm gonna go down here and just copy and paste them. So I'm gonna grab the residuals 
for year one, go up here, paste. Grab the residuals for year two, copy, paste. Residuals for year three, copy and paste. All right, if I wanted to, just to keep everything nice and tidy, I can just shade these in really quickly to make sure I keep them straight in my mind. So now we have our residuals in their own table here. So now what we're gonna do is just conduct a simple one-way or single factor ANOVA on the residuals. Now, watch what happens here. So we'll go to data, data analysis. This time we're gonna to go to ANOVA single factor. Input range are our three columns right here. Labels in first row. Output range, we'll put it kind of below, right there, so we can see everything. And click OK. Now, what do we see here? Several interesting things I want to point out. The first thing I want to point out is the total sum of squares. So if we go down here to sum of squares in ANOVA, it's 1477.2. Well, where else in this sheet do we see that number? Well, it's over here. It's the residual sum of squares in the regression output when we just use the covariate. So what does that tell you? The covariate accounted for 1601, the residual, what's left over 1477, and we can verify that in the total sum of squares over here for the ANOVA on the residuals, 1477.2. So we kind of took the residual sum of squares over here on its own and did our single factor ANOVA. Now, what are the results? Well, we can see here that our p-value is 0 0.155 approximately. Well, of course, that is much greater than 0 0.05, which is the value we would use to determine whether or not that is significant or not. And if we look at our sum of squares here, we can see that the between group variance, which is the variance between the years, is only 240 but the within group within the years is much higher. So there was much more variance within the groups than there was between the groups. And of course, that's why we can see here that our p-value is not significant. And that is what we're doing fundamentally under the hood when we're looking at ANCOVA. So we're conducting regression on the dependent variable using the covariate or covariates first figuring out how much of the total sum of squares is accounted for by the covariate or covariates, then we perform the ANOVA procedure on the residuals over here on the side. And what that does is it gives us the overall model that we had before. So here was the overall model. We can see that what we've done here is everything at once. If we go to this fancy output here, everything matches. If I go down to our model parameters table altogether, we can see here that the only thing that was significant was GPA. All right, so that wraps up this video on ANCOVA. And I really hope you have a better understanding of what's going on under the hood fundamentally when we are conducting ANCOVA and why we would want to conduct ANCOVA. So we take one or more covariates, look at how much of the variation in the dependent variable they're accounting for, and then, and only then, can we figure out to what extent our factors have any differences among them with respect to the dependent variable. So I hope you found this video helpful, informational, and insightful when you're really trying to understand more what's going on under the hood in statistical analysis. So thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate your time. I wish you all the best, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.